Crabbing from the boat can be a ton of fun, but you can also make easy mistakes that put safety and fun in question. So today, let's go through the top seven crabbing from the boat mistakes to help you avoid them. What is going on you out there Mavericks? Welcome back to the channel. Now when it comes to crabbing from the boat, there's some simple mistakes that all of us can make from not putting the plug in the boat, to not having enough gas in the boat, to forgetting a knife, the crab measure, and heck, even leaving your bait at home. So today we're gonna go through some advanced mistakes when it comes to crabbing from the boat to help you avoid these things and have a really fun time out crabbing on the water. Now that starts with mistake number seven, which is clearing the deck. Now, just like when you're fishing, you don't want stuff on the deck of the boat. You want your gear organized, your gear put away. You don't want stuff rolling around on the floor. You don't want to be banging into the bait box or bucket. What you want to make sure is the decks are cleared. You're not tripping over stuff. You can bring the crab gear in easily. You can bring your rope in easily and you have a space to process the crabs that are in the trap of the ring. Throw the non-keepers back, put the keepers in a bucket and keep things super clear. When you have things cluttered, that is a safety concern and there's been too many times Times where I've tripped over rope, I've tripped over something, rolled around on the floor, or there's just too much stuff that I'm having to dance around in the back. So you want to make sure after you've got your gear in the water, you've got the deck cleared and you've got a nice open space to pull up your gear and process the crap. Now mistake number six is going fast. And we've talked about this in other videos and especially when it comes to boating and crabbing, you want to go slow, whether it's getting out to the spot, whether it's getting your gear or moving your gear around. And a lot of bays and a lot of areas in Oregon, the crabbing area can get congested really fast with a lot of traps and a lot of pots in a very small area. And because of that, I've seen a lot of mistakes over the years where people will run over ropes and buoys with their engine, people are going too fast, you throw some waves, people aren't paying attention, you lose gear over the side. And especially if you're new into crabbing from the boat or you are new into boating and you want to get into crabbing, first piece of advice that I would give you that's not gear related is to go slow and go at the pace that you are comfortable at doing where you don't feel scared, you don't feel like you're putting the people on your boat or your boat at risk and you're being safe and having a really fun time. Now mistake number five has to do with crabbing bait and the mistake is not putting the bait in a cooler or a bucket and having a precise location of where you're gonna put your bait on the boat. One of the things that I learned from my grandfather a long time ago and he used to crab with chicken a lot is he would just throw the container of chicken into the boat and sometimes there would be chicken legs and drumsticks flying around in the boat making a mess adding all that chicken scent into the boat and I gotta tell you the boat would reek after a day of crabbing and most importantly if you're brining your bait having it in a cooler or a bucket and having it close by when you need it you're gonna keep that brine or that smelly jelly and that stinky added scents from getting on the floor getting on the carpet or getting on your boat and that's a huge mistake that I see people do is they just grab the bait out and then it's just dripping that goo all over the boat. What you want is a bucket or a cooler to bring the bait over, put it into the crab bait holder and then move your bait bucket back to where it was and that'll keep things super clean and not messy. Now mistake number four is super funny and this happened to my family, specifically my grandfather, which is not checking the boat to make sure you've got all the non-keepers out and back in the water. Now my grandfather grandfather's boat, the Gully Wamper, which I grew up crabbing on, there was just one thing my grandfather was really bad at, which was to check to make sure under all the seats and the little pockets and crevices that there weren't some little non-keeper crabs floating around in the boat, making sure that we got all the crabs back in the water that weren't keepers. It was like an ongoing joke for us. Every time he would bring the boat home or we'd go out to his shop and it would just reek of this nasty smell. And sure enough, there was a crab underneath his seat that had snuck snuck in there and accidentally made its way home and then for whatever reason he never checked there and that stink would just stay there for forever. I mean like months upon months especially in the summertime when it got hot and he went crabbing and they didn't check the boat for a month. Oh it just reeked in the boat. So make sure you got all the crabs out of your boat and you don't have that lingering smell for days or months. Now mistake number three is something we've also talked about in a prior crabbing tips video which is the mistake of not talking your crab measure to your boat or a bucket in the boat. And this has happened to me more than once and it actually happened to me very recently where I was measuring a crab and I threw the measure over the side of the boat thinking 
I was throwing it into the gunnel, and that crab measure is now at the bottom of the bay. And I see this happen a lot. It actually even happened to my uncle recently too. Just make sure you tie in your measure with some rope or some fishing line or something to keep it in the boat. You don't want to be constantly having to go to the store to buy crab measures every week or every month because you accidentally throw them overboard. Now mistake number two is pulling the rope and the crabbing gear right over the side of the gunnel, which is going to A, hurt the rope, but also ding your gunnel and wreck the paint and the finish as well. And this happens a lot with new boaters when it comes to crabbing. They get right up to the gear and they feel like they need that leverage to pull the rope up and get the crab gear up, but they have to pull it and pull it right over the gunnel where you're rubbing the rope against that, which is a complete no-no. And this is where having the telescoping scope hook, getting a hold of the crabbing gear and pulling it at an angle so you're not rubbing that rope over the gunnel. And that takes practice to know how to get the boat in the right area, to get your hook in there, and then pull at an angle and get your gear over the side so you're not hitting the gunnel. And then another great tip that I have is I've added some rubber mats into the side of my gunnel that fold over. So if I do pull that rope or I ding or bringing that crab gear up, I'm not dinging the top and side of that gunnel. I've got a little bit of protection there. So if you're the person pulling the crab gear up or you're designating somebody to pull the crab gear up in the boat, make sure the direction is to pull at an angle and not pull that rope and gear right over the side of the gunnel. Crabbing from the boat mistake number one is something I see all the time, which is people throwing their pot or ring or trap in the water first, then letting the rope out and then throwing the buoy out. That is the wrong process that you want to do. You actually want to do the reverse of that, which is to throw the buoy out first, get all your rope out, because if you have a tangle or it's around your foot, this is where it can be dangerous when you throw the pot or trap in first, because if you throw that out and that rope is wrapped around your foot, that is a very dangerous situation. This way you're in the safest situation to deploy your crabbing gear and you're going to have a ton of fun knowing that you're following a simple procedure, keeping it fun, and you're going to enjoy all those crabs you get at the end of the day. And there you guys have it, my top seven crabbing from the boat mistakes. I hope you guys learned some valuable information out of today's video that'll help you when you go out crabbing next on the water in the boat. And leave a comment below in the video as to what mistake that you make the most when you're out crabbing from the boat or what you've seen other people do the most. I think you'll be surprised to find that the first couple of mistakes on this list are probably common ones that you see all the time. And if you like today's video, smash the thumbs up on that video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing if you love crabbing, crabbing tips, and other outdoor content. And don't forget, and as always, you guys, the outdoors is a gift. Go crabbing with others.